Hello and welcome to CB Talk, the Combined Transport Blackwell monthly podcast. Today is August 23rd, 2024, and I'm your host, Nick Card, Vice President of Operations. Today we have an interview with Travis Spaulding. Travis and I had an opportunity to talk about the current challenges facing the tactical division and some of the opportunities coming up. I hope you'll stick around. I think you'll enjoy it. Some news and updates. Uh, first off, drivers and employee of the month. I want to thank Eric Boland, our glass and flatbed heavy haul driver of the month, Michael Austin, our Blackwell driver of the month, and Trenton Hill, our heavy haul driver of the month. Thank you for all you do out over the road for us and this country. Also want to congratulate Justine Marshall, who is our corporate employee of the month. Congrats, Justine. Thank you all again for your hard work. A reminder that school is back in session in many places. Please be cautious around school zones. Also, in areas where school may not be in session, private schools or charter schools may be in session, so keep an eye out for those kids and be safe on the road. Driver Appreciation Week is coming up September 15th through 21st. Driver Spouse Appreciation is the week before. You can nominate your spouse by filling out the form that was posted on the Team Combined Facebook page or by emailing social media at combinedtransport.com. Saturday the 21st, we'll be having a party to celebrate the drivers at the Blackwell shop. Please make sure to swing on by if you'll be in the area. And with that, it's time for the interview. Today we have Travis Spaulding joining us in the studio. Thank you, Travis, for being here. It's great to have you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Travis uh, started with the company as a pilot car coordinator, having to chase down pilot cars to keep our heavy haul trucks moving. He spent six to seven years as dispatch and sales under Jake Wells and became the heavy haul tactical manager in May of 2023. Uh, so Travis, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, you're the, the newest manager, the newest division manager that we have here in the company. And, and you know, we've talked to a few of these other managers and, and uh, They've sort of shared some of their story about coming in while well, as the newest manager. Talk a little bit about your role, what that means for you, and what does that mean taking on the tactical division? Yeah, that's a great question, Nick. Um, so my role as the heavy haul tactical manager uh, is one to you know ensure that we've got profitability in the department uh, through sales and running our efficient logistics. But one of the biggest things I wanted to work towards was uh, making sure that our drivers are feeling advocated for and their needs are being met. Uh, and, and another one was maintaining high morale uh, amongst the team. And that's not just the team in the office. That's our drivers out on the road, right? That's critically important. We all work together uh, to achieve success. And then also bridging that gap between departments and having there be really good, strong through line communication uh, is critical for all of us to be able to achieve success, not only as individuals, but for combined transport as well. Absolutely. So I know one of the big changes uh, or challenges that you've taken on as uh, recently is is the fleet manager transition. And granted, you've only been there since 2023 as the, the manager. And so that's a, uh, I mean, you barely had your feet underneath you before we started upending everything, doing this fleet manager stuff. We've talked with uh, Chris Clark about what that looks like. We've talked uh, uh, to Melissa and seen that on the other end. Uh, you know, from your perspective in tactical, what's happening, what's coming up, and what does that look like for, for your team and for the drivers going forward? Yeah, you know, it, it was a really big change, and it still is. Uh, it's very new for us. Um, it's something that uh, even when I was doing sales, I could see how we had kind of these individuals doing three separate roles and I could see how maybe spreading that out would be more advantageous uh, and you know better fitting for the drivers, better fitting for our customers. Uh, so when we finally made that move over to fleet managers and account managers and being the last department to do it, uh, it's been a little bit uh, of a rocky road uh, to be able to navigate it. We recently just had a meeting recap uh, to see how things are going. Um, I was able to get some driver feedback, uh, account manager feedback, and fleet manager feedback. And where I really want to drive home the purpose of this change is it was to better assist our drivers. We want them to feel like they have an advocate in the office at all times. One person that they can call to get their needs met 
Uh, and then uh, also it allows our account managers to focus on working more direct with our customers to better in turn help our drivers maintain miles, getting the loads that they need, uh, and, and working towards that. Um, some of the struggles that we've encountered or, you know, understandably so, uh, drivers unfortunately feel like these are, they're being micromanaged, right? And that, that is not what we want it to be. Okay, what we want to create is a more standardized process for the logistics of our fleet, right? So if every driver is maximizing their miles, maximizing their hours every single time, we know that that's the standard and we can count on that, which in turn allows our account managers to better quote freight, plan for it properly. Uh, But the other thing I really want to drive home is for the fleet managers, the interactions I want them to have on a day-to-day basis isn't a business transaction of it being fleet manager to driver. I want it to be human to human, right? I I want us to get to know each other better on a more basic level than just having it be business. You know, that in turn is going to be able to create a a better environment for the drivers to feel like they can be heard and have a safe platform to speak their mind. And they're speaking it with somebody that is there for them and knows them and understands them more than just as that driver holding the wheel. Um, so, you know, that's what we're working towards. It is ever evolving. Uh, there are going to be constant changes internally. We are going to be meeting bi-weekly until it feels like this is really solid, uh, for everybody. And that's including the drivers. So it's really important, uh, that the drivers do speak up when they have concerns, they would like to see changes. We're here for that. And we're here for that. That's awesome. You know, you're, you mentioned, uh, dealing with that person to person, how do you create a human to human contact? And, and one of the things that popped into my head is, as you were talking about that is some of the challenges that a lot of other companies have faced, uh, non-trucking companies in the aftermath of COVID, how they've gone from having all of these teams in one building to suddenly you have a bunch of people who are working from home and now they have to figure out how to establish that kind of stuff. Well, as a trucking company, we've been doing that forever but even though we've been doing it forever it doesn't mean we're like expert and good at it and there's more for us to learn and more for us to improve so you know could you talk a little bit about you know how is it you know because we obviously it's not something that's innate to us when you're talking to somebody on a phone you lose what do they say 70 percent of communication because it's the nonverbal stuff that you lose how do you help train staff to be able to be successful with that? How do you help drivers be successful with that? I mean, that's a huge challenge. I know we all face that. Yeah, um, that's a really good question. So I think it is just that friendly reminder of, you know, like, let's quickly walk through what a business transaction phone call sounds like. If you're calling a driver, checking up with them every single day, which is what we want our fleet managers to be doing, it's going to be a, hey, so you're getting your miles in today? Everything's good with your equipment. You're going to make sure you're running out your mile, your hours of service. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Well, that there's nothing about that is personal, right? That's all business related. So instead it's a, Hey, how are you doing today? You know, get to know them. Do they have family back at home? Do they have a wife, kids, grandkids, you know, when they're on their free time, what do they like to do? Is there anything relatable that you two can talk about? You know, um, uh, just an example that I can use. uh, I had a driver that I worked with for years and I always kind of approached it from a more business standpoint. And unfortunately, uh, you know, I wasn't always as um, cool, calm and collected as I hopefully come across now. Um, So we would butt heads every now and then. And uh, And this driver happened to live in Wisconsin and he was going to home time. And I had lived in Wisconsin for a few years myself. And I just simply asked him, I'm like, hey, what are you going to be doing on your home time? And he had mentioned to me he was going to be headed to Milwaukee, right? And I was like, oh, man, I absolutely love Milwaukee. It's great. Have you ever been to the Third Ward? And he was like, no. So we got talking about that. And next thing I know, he's like, yeah, we're taking my grandkids there. And I'm like, oh, you have grandkids? Like, you don't even look old enough to have grandkids, man. Like, what are you even talking about right now? And just from that conversation alone, going forward, our interactions were vastly different. We began speaking to each other as human beings 
and on that fundamental personal level while still accomplishing the business, right? Those two things can be done and go hand in hand. And that is what I'm trying to get across um, and train and coach is to ask those probing questions, but not in a interview, inquisitive, interrogative manner. It, just take the time to get to know them. It doesn't have to be on a very deep level if they don't want it to be, but just having to know like what their likes and dislikes are, you know, what are their struggles at home? Like they're not home. Drivers are out on the road. Their home is their truck. And when they're away from their actual home, those stress and burdens are grown exponentially because they're not able to be there to constantly take care of them. So just having the empathy and understanding that alone should hopefully help go a long way. Well, that's really good. I think that's a really good approach. And, you know, it's easy to lose sight of humanity when everything is so focused. And, you know, we, we, it's difficult to measure. Uh, one of my favorite sayings in business is you get what you measure. And I have seen that that is absolutely the truth. And sometimes it's really hard to measure certain things that are also very important, like empathy. You can't, you can't have like an empathy score for your drivers or your people. And if, and so what, what are we measuring? We measure profitability. And so therefore that's what gets done, but we, we can't do it well without some of these other pieces. So I, I think that's a really great perspective. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. So as we think ahead, as, as you're transitioning with this, with fleet managers and account managers, uh, what is that going to mean sort of on a day-to-day, week-to-week level for the drivers? How are they going to experience that change and what additional changes are coming down the pike? Yep. So um, right off the bat, the ideal is the driver should start to see an uptick in freight for them to be able to haul, right? So that is one of our current struggles. I would say that um, we're in a little bit of a a wave of how freight comes in. It's not very consistent and steady right now. So what that means is we have to work two times harder to go out, try to find either new customers, reach out to old customers we used to do business with to try and secure that freight. And that was a little tough to be able to do when they were spread so thin of having to dispatch the driver, turn it into permits, you know, do 24 hour calls, do all of that, right? So that division of labor um, allows the account manager to focus on getting that freight for the driver. And so that should ideally see uh, less sitting, you know, unfortunately, uh, I'm sure the drivers are witnessing and seeing it currently that, you know, there might be a couple of days where you're sitting. That's not ideal. We do not want that. There's at no point in time are we sitting here, you know, trying to put a driver into that position. We want every driver, ideally, to have a cross-country run. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. So moving forward, uptick in freight, and then on the fleet management side, they should be able to have better proactive communication with maintenance. So a lot of, you know, driver concerns are they will voice concern, you know, back before we had account fleet managers, uh, they would voice concern to uh, one of the sales reps or dispatchers. This is going wrong with their truck. Maybe tell another one something else is going wrong. But unfortunately, that through line communication never made its way to OTR. Well, now you have one person that you're able to relay all this information to. They're going to get with OTR and then proactively either get this maintenance done to help you feel better in your equipment uh, in between loads while there's time or maybe while it's under a load instead of it being a reactive nature where, you know, the driver comes back to us frustrated because they don't feel heard and listened uh, to and nothing's being done. Uh, so miles, right? Payroll, all that stuff, everything that they felt like maybe they weren't being heard on, that's what those fleet managers are there for. They are there to assist them in any way possible. Sometimes it's going to be just getting them to the right person to speak to, but they know that when they call them, they're there for them. And that's that's what we're working towards for the future. And ideally, it'll create uh, as um, we uh, move towards better times and 
uh, higher freight volumes, it creates a more layered growth structure to where as we can grow our fleet more, maybe get more drivers to refer other drivers from other companies that maybe aren't happy, it allows us to expand in a more readily fashioned way. Well, good. So some good changes on the horizon then is, yes. is a good perspective there. Um, you know, as you're making these changes, you'd mentioned earlier some driver feedback and talking with your team. Um, you know, what has been some of that feedback? How, how are you addressing that? And, and uh, how is that shifting? You know, as since you're kind of the last division to go through this, you're also building on the knowledge of other divisions. But I would also imagine you have some unique challenges and issues within your particular department. So I don't know if you could talk a little bit about kind of that feedback and how that sort of worked its way into your process. Yeah, so um, the, the biggest difference I would say between uh, our Blackwell division and our flatbed uh, glass division compared to the heavy haul division is really what it, the permitting, right? That, that is something that uh, flatbeds may do occasionally, um, and there are some drivers uh, well-versed in hauling over dimensional freight, but when you add the permitting equation and heavy haul by nature doesn't load or unload on weekends. So the speed at which we operate is a, a little bit slower in, compared to the other departments. So that's one of the biggest challenges that we are working on is um, balancing that, right? Making sure that our drivers are maintaining their high miles and the, utilizing their full hours of service. Uh, but how, how do we do that effectively? That's, that's a tricky balance, right? And the feedback that we're getting from the drivers is a lot of them are like, I don't want to be called every day. Okay. And, and I understand that. And I understand that better now after we had the meeting that we did yesterday as a team in the office, because going back to how those interactions were, they were business-based interactions. And I'll be quite frank, like, I'm sure everybody feels this way. If I'm only being reached out to about why are you not running the remainder of your hours or, hey, when did you get loaded? Okay, you've got this many hours to drive or it's uh, why did you decide to stop here or right? all these things, I'm going to see that phone call and I'm probably not going to want to pick it up, to be honest, right? I think that's probably universal for all of us. And that's, and that's what I don't want. I don't want that. I don't want there to be those, it to be those day-to-day -day interactions like that. I want it to break away from that and have those be the 10% conversations that we have. Because once we can all get up to the speed and across the board have uniformity amongst how Blackwell's expectation of their drivers to run, Flatbed's expectation of the drivers to run, and Heavy Hall's, as long as we are all uniform, and speaking that same language and working towards that same commonality, we don't have those conversations are going to completely go away, right? Um, so I completely hear the driver's concerns, they're valid. Um, and as the fleet managers get to know the drivers, maybe it won't be an everyday phone call because they're respecting each other's wishes, right? But we need to get to the point where we all know each other before we can even assume, right? Um, some of the other feedback, uh, is, uh, from the drivers is pushing f to maximize those hours, right? And, and there's a little coaching that has to be done on the fleet manager side. So one of the things that, uh, I'm working with them on is making sure that they have a good understanding of the situation prior to kind of defaulting for the lack of a better word to the just typical questions, you know, like we had a driver that was, uh, woke up at 3 a.m. and drove for about three hours to make it to a port on time. And it turns out that we didn't quite have enough stuff done on our end so that when they showed up, there were things we needed to do. So it was a long day for him. Like he, it was very stressful and he had to do a lot of waiting, a lot of figuring out of what was going on. And by the time he got loaded and done, he made it out to a truck stop, but during that period of time, it was so overwhelmingly stressful for him. But the problem was that wasn't asked or looked at prior to a, hey, why are you stopping here? Okay. 
So that is a we need to take a step back and we need to make sure we understand the full scope of the situation before we start looking at these maybe unrealistic expectations in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you had mentioned that micromanagement, right? And there is a fine balance, and it is hard because I, I don't always succeed at it either, is how do you uh, avoid micromanaging people, but at the same time help support them, be a second set of eyes, and also be a resource for encouragement? I mean, I can tell you that, like, there's a lot of stuff in my life that I'm like, I don't really want to do it. But if I've got somebody holding me accountable they can push me through and I can be better than I would be on my own thanks to somebody pushing me along. But, you know, striking that balance between well, you're pushing too hard and now it's micromanaging me versus you're pushing me enough to get me to go. I mean, that's the thing is, you know, I'm sure our drivers, like all people, have down days. But if you had somebody who's there to help push you along and get you through a down day, well, now it's a day instead of that being a terrible miles day that is going to reflect on your paycheck, you still got good miles that day. You kept the cycle going, and now you're going to continue to get more money out of it. So, you know, good luck in, in striking that balance, because I know it's not an easy one to, to get through. No, it's, it's not at all. And, and I think it goes back to the, you know, I, I would like us maybe one day, and this is um, uh, maybe a little unrealistic, but, you know, like, people don't have a tendency to want to help strangers. In the sense of if you don't know that person and they're asking you to do a favor for them, the odds of you wanting to do that favor for them are pretty slim. But if you actually know the person and, you know, you're, you're asking for that little bit of extra and they know like, hey, this isn't the norm and it sounds like I really need to help out, they're going to be more inclined to do it than, dude, my fleet manager is constantly riding me and they like don't even understand me at all or what i go through out here on the road on a day-to-day -day basis like why would i want to do that right so you're absolutely right it's it's a very fine line and i think uh we'll find it we'll get there it's just a matter of we need everybody's help right we need the account managers the fleet managers the sales reps and the drivers all to work together to achieve that success but together we can get there um you know, so thinking, uh, so obviously we've been talking a lot about with the fleet managers and stuff, the, the immediate transition, but thinking a little bit farther out, what are your kind of visions for what is going to happen in tactical? I mean, thinking out, you know, say a five-year timeline, like, uh, you know, obviously we've got some freight challenges, kind of what's your forecast for us to see those turn around? Uh, you know, what, what are some new markets that we might expand into, some new customers? You know, kind of what, what's your thinking as, as we look farther out into the future? Yeah, that's a really good question, Nick. So um, as we look farther out into the future, one of the things I would like to work towards is um, tightening up our logistics in the sense of creating more dedicated lanes and whether that that doesn't mean it's maybe a dedicated fleet but more specialized lanes that we know we always have so a good example would be we regularly get like california kansas freight right well then if we were able to get a lane that's california texas and then we can get some texas idaho and then we have maybe idaho or washington down to california Right, that is creating really consistent, strong lanes that we know that help reduce deadhead, which improves you know profitability for the company. But what it really does is it helps our drivers know that they have consistent freight, they have consistent lanes, um, they are going to be able to better schedule home time, they're going to be able to count more consistently on steady paychecks. Uh, that that's something I would like us to move towards. Right is across the US and Canada, kind of getting away from this OTR, we just go wherever mentality, I would really like us to start honing more in on specific freight lanes that we know we can bid, get, and work towards and build those while we still maybe have a smaller OTR fleet, but that's really where I would like us to see our logistics go in the trucking side. Um, as far as the sales goes, uh, that is an ever-evolving struggle. Um, I think we are starting to see that we need to be getting into more niche markets. Um, you know, getting into aerospace is something that uh, another manager, Jake Wells, has been working on and doing really well at. 
uh, and we're seeing uh, the fruits of his labor um, come to fruition, right? Not only on the driver's side, but on the company side as well. Um, so looking at getting into uh, getting away from the broad scope, construction, agricultural equipment, I, you know, we're still always going to have that stuff. But where are those more niche markets that we can kind of corner, specialize in, and be that cut above the other companies and really get in there and be that primary carrier for them? Uh, so those are the challenges uh, and the goals I have put forth for um, our account managers and sales rep as well. Well, definitely, I think some of those are some lofty aspirations, and, and I hope we're successful. I mean, what are some of the challenges that you think we're going to be facing as we get in there? I, I know in particular with some of these niche markets, I've talked with Jake and some of his challenges in aerospace. What do you think those challenges are going to be on the tactical side to being successful for these customers? Uh, the largest one's going to be competition, right? There are already companies in there doing that. So... That's going to be step one, is how can we differentiate ourselves from the other companies? Well, the way that we're able to do that is we've got stellar drivers that are great representatives. They show up our, you know, as pretty standard on really good behavior, representing the company well, and then it's beating out the other company's timelines, you know, if able, within reason. We're not looking to have anybody do anything you know, off the books. Uh, but it, it really comes down to how often you can succeed, right? This is standard across the board with most customers. If we are constantly failing on loads to deliver on time, pick up on time, damaging equipment, whatever it may be, and that's not solely on the driver, right? I don't, I don't want any driver to take it as uh, that's on them. It is all of us. There are things that in the office, we can proactively do to better set the driver up for success on loads, right? But then they're also our last line of defense. So us ensuring that every time we're doing the load, our success rate is 99% because as soon as the other carriers are 95 and lower, they're going to come back to us every single time because they can count on us and know we can get the job done. So that's that's how we can differentiate ourselves. The next one is finding those markets. That's not always easy to do, right? So one of the good things I would say <clears throat> that comes from um, AI and like chat GPT and stuff is those resources can really help us as sales reps and account managers kind of think more outside of the box, right? Because if you're just Googling you know, like different, um, sec in, you know, energy sectors, um, building sectors, so on and so forth. Well, you're not always going to get necessarily a full scope of what's there, but, you know, utilizing chat GPT is going to be able to provide you maybe with actual business names that never popped up on your search, new, uh, specialized markets that weren't coming up. So it's utilizing the tools that we have at our disposal and then going out and being persistent. It is not easy to get the person you need to speak to on the phone in today's day and age. And it takes time. It can sometimes take a couple years to even get that one person on the phone. But it's the never giving up. It is the constantly calling. And then once they see like, okay, this, this person's been calling like every day for like, or at least once a week for three years, like they clearly want to get in the door. Right. So then as soon as we have that opportunity, then it's our chance to show them that we can succeed. Um, so that's that's how we're able to get into those and set ourselves apart. No, so those are absolutely some absolutely. some big challenges that you've got to, you know, to take on some of those uh, opportunities. Now, one of the things that you'd mentioned, and I was thinking maybe you have some takeaways for us, you know, how do we, we got to be that 99% level. Hmm? You know, what are the things that you see, you know, what's a one quick, you know, what's the thing that drivers or, or fleet managers should keep as top of mind that's causing us to slip from that 99%? Um, I think that comes down to accountability, honestly. Uh, I think that, you know, that's something that I try to always hold myself to. I'm a really big proponent of before I'm, 
willing to point the finger at anybody else. I'm going to point it at myself first and ask, what could I have done differently or what could I have done better to help us achieve success? And I think as long as we have that in mind, um, it, it really can change the scope of how we look as a company as a whole. Um, when the fleet managers, uh, you know, let's say we don't achieve success on a load, okay? Well, did the fleet manager do everything that they needed to do to help the driver, right? Did we know we needed to tarp the load? Can they help tarp on site? Uh, what are the requirements for going into load? Is it a first come first serve? Do we need to be by appointment only? Like what can we do to better facilitate helping our driver during the loading and unloading process as well as helping our customer, right? And then on the driver side, it's the, man, I showed up two hours late to a crane appointment. Could I have maybe not stopped three hours early this one day to make it there on time? Oh, dang. Yeah, I actually, looking back at it, I probably could have. Or was I maybe not as proactive in my communication? I got delayed in traffic, but I didn't relay it in a timely manner to where now we can get ahead of it, right? One of the worst things that can happen is when a customer notifies us of a failure. And that, it, I, I can't stress that enough, that is how you lose customers. When we cannot get ahead of something, they will eventually say enough is enough. We're going to somebody else that does it better. So it's just taking accountability for our actions and in us not placing the blame elsewhere, but looking at ourselves and asking, could I have done something better? And then if you're like, dude, I did everything I possibly could, then at that point, yes. Like we need to figure out where the accountability lies and it's not to blame them for it. It is to figure out how we can fix it going forward and coach and grow. Growth to me is the key to everything, right? It, it's my model for my personal life and my professional life. I, I want to grow to be better. I'm not perfect. I never will be. I will constantly be learning. I'm going to constantly make mistakes and, and, and that's okay. And I'm okay with that. As long as I am working towards being a better person for myself and for others and being there to help them as well. Well, Travis, we're almost out of time, but in the spirit of human to human interaction here, tell me a little bit about yourself. What, what do you do in your free time? What are your interests and your hobbies and help me and your listeners get to, or our listeners get to know you a little better? Yeah. Um, so when I'm outside of work, uh, I love to play video games. I'm a huge nerd. I do, uh, I'm a DM for Dungeons and Dragons. I do that pretty much every week or bi-weekly. Uh, have uh, board game nights with friends. Um, I love to drink tea. Uh, my wife and I like to go out on the town and, you know, go out for a good meal um, and throw back some drinks and cut loose every once in a while. Uh, I mean, other than that, man, I'm, I'm just like everybody else, you know, just trying to get by, enjoy life while it's there and, and do the best that I can. Do you have a favorite board yeah, game? Oh, man, that's a good question. I was thinking about this before uh, I came in here. Um, I, I like Wingspan. Uh, that's a game where it's uh, like a, a bird collection game. The artwork on it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and there's another game, uh, Archduke. It's a quick, easy card game uh, that can be played. And it's one of those two, like you can have it with you, you know, even in your truck or something. If you have a couple buddies that you meet up with at a regular truck stop you can easily you know be sitting at like a table in the diner or something like that uh getting down and playing so i would say those are two but i i mean i i love to play pretty much any board game you got so oh, good well maybe someday we'll play wingspan together yeah well travis i really appreciate having you on it's been great for you to be here i appreciate you sharing your perspective on tactical any uh, last parting thoughts uh before we wrap up just you know to the drivers out there listening, help us be better. Communicate. Don't hold on to it. Tell us what we need to do to help you. That's what we're here for. And um, I'm looking forward to all of us achieving success. Great. Me too. Great. Thank you so much, Travis. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Thank you again, Travis, for that great interview. Our next episode will be out on September 20th. We'll be joined by Buddy Acup the new Blackwell Division Manager. If you have any questions for Buddy, please send them to us via Facebook or email them at cbtalk at combinedtransport.com. 
We appreciate your participation. It's your engagement that makes this podcast work. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. And thank you for being a part of the Combined Transport team.